enthusiastic crowds welcoming the Nazis as they came marching into Vienna in March 1938. He even saw Hitler at a rally. My papa experienced Kristallnacht in November 1938. His mother was frantic looking for her children and his father hid out in the store. World War II began September 1939. The borders were sealed and my grandfather's family could no longer receive food from their relatives in Poland. After finally making it to America, he realized how hungry he was. His Polish relatives never made it up. The way he escaped. In the middle of the night, the SS came bursting through the doors of my grandfather's family's apartment and woke everyone up. They yelled and screamed and beat my grandfather's father in front of everyone. The, night, the children were crying and afraid. My papa was hiding under the bed. What? Yeah, hiding under the bed. Yes. Wow. Okay. Supposedly, one of the neighbors told the Nazis that my grandfather's family left their lights on past curfew time. But, but this was a lie. But little did anyone know, this lie ended up saving their lives. The SS took my great-grandfather and continued beating him up. They left him in the Danube River and thought he was dead. The next morning, a kind Austrian policeman found him and brought him to the hospital. For days, the family did not know where he was. After a few weeks, my grandpa's father improved. Meanwhile, the family received their papers to go to the concentration camp. But somehow, my grandfather's mother convinced them to wait until her husband was sent home from the hospital. The doctors kept my great-grandfather in the hospital longer than he needed to be, so that would give the family more time to get their visas to come to America. My grandfather's mother worked very hard every day to get these visas. Thus, when the time was about to run out, on the day they were supposed to go to the concentration camp, they got their visas to come to America. So the beating ended up saving their lives because it bought them the precious time they needed to get their visas. Besides my grandfather's gold watch that they risked their lives to smuggle in, they had to leave everything behind, even my papa's stamp collection. That's a gold watch. Mm -hmm. they, were not, they were not allowed to bring a single thing. And here is the gold watch. Well, part of it anyway. Wow. Because I think he has the watch. He has a watch. Can we, can we see the watch? Do you have the is watch? Is this a good um, view? And the it's thing? a wonderful view. Okay. Yeah, that's good. Your little fingers out of the way, though. There you go. Okay. <laughs> How did they smuggle it, Brandon? Um, Do you remember? Um, they, they went, you guys went to a, sh a shoesmith, a Jewish shoesmith, and they made a, some sort of hidden compartment inside the shoe, and they put and they the, helped. And they put the watch inside the hidden compartment. You had to surrender everything. You came here with nothing. With no other, she took awful chances. Yeah. Obviously, you saw it. Oh, she knew. Yes. She knew. 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 She knew.